Hello everyone. So I've been hearing talk about some crazy new Korean builds that are sure to catch on that there's this new rune that's crazy overpowered and taking over the meta. I'd say that all this turned out to be a bit of an exaggeration, but today I do want to talk about the new rune, Jack of All Trades, and how it can be a pretty good choice in some of your games. This rune in the inspiration tree was added as part of the season 14 mid-season update, and it was kind of swept under the rug by some of the other changes like the crit item changes and quirky. However, as time goes on, new ideas and strategies will always emerge, and after a lot of insisting that this room actually had some potential, it finally has begun to pick up in a high-low NA and Korean solo queue. We've begun to see some new weird builds like Rod of Ages, Nabori Flicker Blades, Volley Bear, and Stride Baker, Frozen Heart, Nocturne, all made to find synergy with the rune, but more on those later. In order to understand how we got there, we first have to look into what the rune actually does. But first, I want to say that if you like this content, uh, feel free to sub But first, I want to say that if you like this content, feel free to like and subscribe. I do have a fair amount of things I already plan to cover in the future, but if you guys have any requests or ideas, you can also feel free to let me know in the comments. What the rune actually does is grant stacks called jack stacks. You get these for each unique stat from items, and each of these are worth one ability haste. Additionally, you'll get 10 and 15 adaptive force at the 5 and 10 stack breakpoints, respectively. While it's possible to get more haste from the rune, we aren't going to focus on those, and instead we're going to focus on reaching the 5 and 10 breakpoints, as they're the most impactful part of the rune. Late game, this rune isn't all that crazy, but in the context of the early game, these stats are very noticeable. Now, there are a lot of unique stats in the game, so this may sound pretty easy to do, but because we are limited to stats we get from items that we buy, Things are a bit more tricky, especially since some of these stats, like slow resistance, just don't count for some reason. Regardless, let's approach this in a linear manner, starting from the very beginning of the game. When you load into the game, the first thing you should do is buy items with your starting gold. Looking at our options, we have the Doran's items, the support item, and the jungle items, as well as tier, dark seal, and call. Actually, looking at each item seems pretty straightforward in terms of counting your stacks. You have no stats yet, so let's just count how many unique stats the item has. The thing is, even here, things get a little tricky because Call has two stats in its AD and its healing on hit, but the healing doesn't count, so you only get one stack from this item. Doran's shield and Doran's ring similarly suffer because their regions don't count towards their respective stat. The most interesting items here are Doran's blade and World Atlas, as you can get three stacks at the start of the game uh, by buying one of these items. Doran's blade grants lifesteal, which is a pretty uncommon stat, at least in the early game. And Roll Atlas also grants health and mana regen, which aren't that uncommon, but champions that would buy items with one of those wouldn't really buy any items with the other stats. So at least one of those would feel like a rather rare stat. If we want to find builds that reach 5 and 10 stacks as soon as possible, I would say that these two items are probably the best starting points. But what about the rest of the stacks? Well, obviously, you're going to have to buy more items for that. So when you take your first recall and decide to spend your gold, what are you buying? There are a bunch of different components or epic items to choose from, but with this rune, one of the first places I'd look at is the boots. The basic boots are interesting because they offer the only source of flat move speed that counts for this rune, while only being 300 gold and bought by almost every champion. And while there's no chance you're getting to 10 stacks this early, 5 is very doable and boots are one of the best tools you have to do that. While we're here, I'll also talk about the upgraded boots because these can be very useful for later. While some boots do fall short, upgraded boots can provide some of the harder to attain stats that can be useful for getting you to the 5 or 10 stack thresholds. Berserkers, Mercs, Steelcaps, and Ionian boots all allow you to hold another component item that could help you get to the 5 stack mark early, even if you don't upgrade them yet. When you do upgrade your boots, Sork Shoes provide Magic Pen, which is pretty early access to that stat, and Mercs Treads additionally provides Tenacity, which is a very rare stat that counts, which means that th these boots actually can provide up to 3 stacks. But moving on from boots, the rest of your stacks are going to come from components and completed items. Different component items can carry between 1 and 3 stats, which means that if you don't have them yet, then th those are just going to be stacks. Some of the more interesting options here are sources of some of the rare stats like percent move speed, lethality, percent armor pen, percent magic pen, flat mana, or heal and shield power. These are some of the stats can that can help you reach either the 5 stack mark early or the 10 stack mark later on. Looking at all the component items, there are two that stand out to me. Glacial Buckler provides mana, armor, and ability haste, while only costing 900 gold and building into Frozen Heart, which is one of the best items in the game. This item is most frequently bought on tank supports, which, if you've been paying attention, also buy the support item and can buy Merc Threads. 
In fact, the things lined up so perfectly that the three stats on the three items are all unique, which would mean that buying all three of them together would give you nine stacks. To get the last stack, you can just buy a longsword or an amp tome, which would also help in determining which stat your adaptive force turns into. And while these champions may not necessarily be the best users of this adaptive force, the same holds true if you buy the orange blade instead of the support item. So if you're willing to buy Frozen Heart, you can end up with builds such as that Stridebaker Frozen Heart Nocturne, or other similar Bruiser type builds. By taking this rune, you're being compensated for choosing a more defensive build and getting some of the damage you lost back. If Bruiser items begin to suck and tank items continue to be as strong as they are, then Jack of All Trades could be the breaking point for some future disgusting degenerate builds. But I said there were two interesting component items. So what's the second one? That would be Zeal. This item provides attack speed, crit chance, and percent move speed. Most marksman builds contain at least one Zeal item. Doran's Blade, Mark Trades, and Zeal is also 9 stacks. The last stack can come from Lethality if you're building Collector, or Armor Pen if you're building LDR, or a random basic component like a Cloth Armor just to help you get to 10 stacks. Giving up either Magical Footwear or Biscuit Delivery may not be that bad, considering you can convert the extra combat power into something potentially meaningful for your lane. There are also a fair number of other champions who may like some of the Zeal items for attack speed and move speed. Here I'll bring up the new Rod of Ages Flicker Blade Volibear build, as I mentioned it earlier. This build has actually been getting a lot of traction because Rod of Ages provides a good amount of sustain while providing damage and durability, and paired with Flicker Blade, he can just keep spamming his abilities. There are a few other champions apart from the expected audience that are also experimenting with Flicker Blade, like Shivana, Jax, Belveth who may not be able to adapt the same build, but they might find something similar in the future. Phantom Dancer is also built on a few other champions like Garen and... Okay, it's just Garen. Twisted Fate also builds Rapid Fire Cannon, which allows him to utilize this as well. Uh, I saw that Strillmaker was doing something with this. Apart from this, there are other avenues to getting to 10 stacks, but they're going to take a bit longer. AP users are going to have a rough time for the most part with this rune because they just don't have enough unique stats. Getting to 5 is doable, but getting to 10 will take a bit of a sacrifice. The best tool I'd say that mages have to getting to 10 stacks is Shirelia's, which isn't that weird of an item to build anymore because the active is quite useful and the stats aren't even that bad. The item provides mana regen, which is nice to have and is a unique stat that isn't present in other mage items. The sacrifices that would have to be made was probably going to be building Merc Treads. Treating Merc Treads as if they provided 15 AP might be needed to get the 10 sacks. So if you need to make that mental compromise, it might be worthwhile. Because otherwise, it is quite difficult to get the 10 sacks on mages. Tanks and bruisers also don't have enough stat variety to be able to reach 10 stacks without having to adapt their build to do so by building either damage or tanks stats respectively. But in terms of making few build adjustments, I would say that this room is most comfortable uh, in both bot lane roles. But what's the point of all this? Is it really worth going through all this hassle for some rune when you can just take a different one? And well, it depends. 10 stacks is like having the stats of both Absolute Focus and Transcendence at the same time, while also not having a level requirement. Another thing is that being able to reach 5 stacks after your first buy can help swing your lane quite a bit especially on AD champions, as the AD is a lot more useful. The problem with this rune is that if you can't reach 10 stacks, mathematically this rune just is undertuned, and in cases where you have to compromise your build, it just may not be worth taking. At the end of the day, you have to take this rune over other choices, and there are a lot of other runes that offer similar rewards without compromise. But what do you guys think? Do you think this rune can be a menace in the future? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, have a good one everybody.